almost took the desktop and broke it, but we're good. We're back here. Hello.
she's kind of like that. I'm not sure if it's just me, but I uh, couldn't hear you uh, when you were talking, Wade. Yeah, still can't hear you. I can't hear you either. I was using the wrong microphone. Can you hear me now? Hello? Everybody's frozen. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. I was using the wrong yeah. mic. Oh, nice. Okay, no worries. It says my internet connection is unstable, so I guess my wife is watching Netflix or something. So, um, so I think we made some decent progress as far as testing yesterday. Um, so after the student, after all the students left, we actually tried some of the ARC stuff that I had written and actually performed quite well. Nice. Shocking, because it would do a U-turn and, and stuff. So um, I think the PID tuning stuff that you guys did needs a little bit more work because when we, we tested that out with just myself, Larry and Mr. Norton, the 90 degrees had only did like 45 but we can work on that. Um, you might be able to see if Mr. Norton will let you work on it during the week if you have time. So um, Bella had questions about ball collector and that's the primary reason for meeting today. So go for it. What uh, yes, I did. Because uh, I this is, I'm pretty sure it's complete and utter trash, but I gave it a shot. That's where we start. <laughs> That's how you get better. You just don't. You just have the confidence, the courage to say, "I gave it a shot." Yeah, he gave it a shot. I will give you all kinds of kudos for giving it a shot. But, um, I'll try to share. Just, when you just go, I can't do it, and I don't. See, you don't. Nobody sees anything. That's a little harder, but at least you made an attempt. So. Yeah, I'm not sure that's, how well it was. That's fine. Um, so we can go through it. I don't know if you want to share your screen or. Uh, yeah, here, to... I'm using my phone because my Wi Fi is also being bad. And I know my siblings are on it despite what they say. Yes. I know it's them. Okay. <laughs> so, so, um, so. Do you have something you can give? Oh, you're using your phone. Okay. Yeah, I can. Wow, yeah. lots of red. <laughs> yes. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I failed. Here, one second. Let me. You didn't really fail. Hold. Nobody's failed. So. <laughs> Here, wait one second. Let me see. Let me give it one last chance to join through my computer real, real quickly. 
So let me. Okay, let's try this. This word? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Feedback. There we go. Okay. Okay, finally, it works. Must have gone off. All right, so screen share, which is much easier. Yes. <laughs> Okay. He's off of move motor, so I'm pretty sure, like I said. Okay. Because I wasn't sure how to work with um, relays, which I, and I was, like I said, I was looking at the um, old code from last year. Okay. And like I said, I don't know how to do relays very. Okay. Um, so did you look at the one branch that I created? But um, um, there, there, was, there was a branch. There, there was a branch that um, I had done. Well, first of all, you're on the master branch. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. My bad. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> um, we'll we'll leave it as it for now. Um, so, okay. So I'm gonna look at. I have to look at mine really quick. Um, I told you. No, it's fine. It's. Uh, uh, let's see here. I, oops. Uh, Kayla, Kayla, and Ethan trying to figure out what the heck this is. What? <laughs> so, let's see here. I have a lot stack. Oh, no, don't do that. Why is it being obnoxious? No, I don't. Go here. Oh, my mouse is all wacky. Um, okay. I'm going to bring up the browser. I'm going to look at it in uh, the browser. First, I was trying to do it on my Windows PC. I have to refresh my brain a little bit. Um, so, repository files. Here, I can stop share. Oh, no, that's fine. I want, I want to see your stuff. I want to see your stuff while I look at my stuff. That's what I'm trying to do. I have your stuff over here and I'm putting my stuff over here. Uh, it's just that I need to, I, I don't ever have any of this stuff in my brain all the time. So um, I just, I have to look at stuff I've done. Uh, okay. So the first thing you need, okay, so you have a ball collector. Um, and so when you created this class, how did you create the class? Let me ask you that. Um, I think it literally was just like create new class up here somewhere. Right, yeah. so you, so under, like under the sub, on the subsystem folder, you did a right click and you did like new. Yeah. Did you do a new command or new subsystem? I'm pretty sure I did a new subsystem. Okay. Um, it's interesting because I inherited from subsystem base, but uh, uh, so why are you getting all these red things? So um, scroll down a little bit. There's nothing else, it's just okay. an override. But you don't have a whole lot in here, right? Mm -hmm. So if we start over, we can start over. This is no big deal. Um, it really isn't. No, it's not. <laughs> so where you see the number two in um, the blue circle on the left. Yeah, yeah right here. Uh, click on it. Okay. And then uh, click on the little arrow thingy. We're going to basically revert all, discard all your changes. Yes. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, Same thing for build Gradle. Uh, let me look at that. What do you? What's the change? I do not know. Oh yeah, it's that. Um, yeah, you can revert that as well. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, and then, okay. So down in the lower left corner, click on where it says master. Oh, wait, no, sorry, master, my bad. Oh, wait, there we go. Okay. So pick origin feature ball collector. Okay, you can close the work, the build gradle working tree, the tabs at the top, left, left, left. Oh, wait, there left. Sorry. Yes, close that. Um, and you can close ballcollector.java as well. Yeah, don't save. Okay. So then right click on under subsystems, right click on, oh, so click on ball collector. So I basically had this all. So if you had switched to the branch, I kind of already had this set up for you as far as like creating the the, bait, the, the, the stub, right? My bad, sorry. Oh no, don't, don't be sorry. This is how we learn. So um, do you remember what we have for motors uh, for the ball collector? Uh, I think they're, um, I forget the type of motor they are. They're the, um, for the, uh, for the ball, I know for lifting, we have like the, um, I'm spacing out on the name, but they're the special motors that will stop. Okay. So we so, can hold that position so, without so think about having that. to use any power. So when I say motors, um, do I really care, does, does the code necessarily care about the actual motor itself. No. What controls the motor? Oh, nope, my bad. Oh, don't don't worry about it. This is how we learn. As, 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 I just realized what I asked was not necessarily the greatest question in the world. Um, and it's just figuring out like, oh, I should have asked a different question. Um, so the code doesn't really care about the, the actual physical motor itself, right? Yeah. What does the code actually control? Uh, the Robo Rio, which uh, controls that, it runs on the Robo Rio, but the Robo Rio um, controls everything else. So like, like a power distribution. Uh, we get power from power distribution. So what is the motor connected to, other than the uh, the the gear part? But what's the what are the wires connected to? The wires for the motor. Sparks. Yes, the speed controller. So you need to you need to define a speed controller for. Um, the motors, right? Because that's how we actually tell the motors to move is through the speed controllers, right? Oh, so you need a speed controller for each motor and their sparks, right? So yeah. in your class, so where it says uh, public class ball collector extends subsystem base, right? Uh, where, sorry, really quick, uh, public. Line nine. Line nine, got it. Okay, so that's the beginning of the class, right? Which is, this is our subsystem. So uh, like you wanna start inserting your member variables because the speed controllers are gonna be member variables, right? That's yeah. what you use to represent the motors. So under line nine, you would start putting in your member variables so for like a spark. So you'd put like private because you don't want the world to be able to use these things. Um, a private class or just private? Just private and then the type of the, the speed controller is Spark, and there's actually a class called Spark. So you can type Spark with capital S. It is case sensitive, so, okay. And hit tab, because it's highlighted the first item for you. I, I've learned, because you're asking about the imports and stuff. So when you're doing this and you see a class that you want to use, like Spark, and you haven't used it before, it'll usually highlight it at the top of that list. And when you hit tab, it automatically puts the import in for you. So notice line seven, it inserted line seven for you. Yeah. It's making it easy. So then, yeah, um, so you would want to call this and then space. And then what, how, what do you want to, what name do you want to give this thing? So um, there are two motors, right? Yeah. One's, one's the intake motor and the other is like the lift motor is what yeah. Larry suggested calling. So, you could you would say lift motor, right? Uh, just capitalization or? Um, so 
however you capitalize it here, you have to be consistent. Um, notice the suggestion it's giving you. Um, with spark. It starts with a, the, the general convention is you start with a lowercase for uh, member variables. So you could do lip motor. Yep. And then uh, you can do the new cool kid way thing and initialize this thing right away because we really don't need to do a whole lot to initialize it. So hit uh, yeah. just space and then equals, right? And we're going to initialize it. And then how do we create a new Spark? How do we create uh, new objects? Variables. Huh? No, sorry, never, 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 never mind. Um, don't we equal it to whatever it's plugged into? Kind of. So when you create a new object in Java, what do you do? The keyword being new. Don't you define it? Uh, so I'm so you, sorry. <laughs> no, this is how we learn. Don't don't. It's, I'm not. I I would rather go through this than get a whole bunch of nothing. Um, so. Uh, or asking like, hey, you guys got questions and I, I it's like crickets. Um, so no, this is totally fine. Um, it's the keyword new, right? Because we want to construct a new object. So we want a new object. So you type new, lowercase actually. Yep, space. And we're creating a spark. So the type of object we're creating is the spark, right? Yeah. And I'm surprised. Yeah, see here, now it's giving you a hint as to what it is you're going to do. So notice that the um, top line says Spark and int channel, blah, blah, blah. So that's the constructor for a Spark. So pick that. Yeah, so now it wants an integer to tell what what channel, which is, a, these are PWM ports, right? Um, this thing is plugged into. Okay, got it. So you could write like what is it, whatever is plugged into, right? Which is probably like two or three or four or five or whatever. However, my that's not the best way I like to do it. That's not the most, that's not the greatest way to do it. So remember we have this class called robot constants. So you can reference, uh, the easy way to do it is you can just type robot constants with a capital R and a capital C, All right? Yep, hit tab, whoops. Yep. Yeah. And tab? Click on that, yeah. Just because it'll add the import for you. Then now a dot, because you want to reference something inside of it. So now if you were to, actually have this already sort of defined. So I called it move. You could, you could type ball collector, right? And there's a whole bunch of ball collector comment or constants. So type ball collector. Actually, I think it needs to be all uppercase. All uppercase. Got it. Yeah, Oops. Maybe, sorry, wrong, wrong key. No, don't worry about it. That's interesting. Um, hmm. Well, ball collector, I'll keep going. I'll uppercase. I'll uppercase it. Underscore. Uh, PWM port. P and this is all uppercase. PWM. Uh, upper PW. P -W -W. Yeah, W. I was like. Or, uh, move. Underscore motor. Oh my, I keep oh, on actually, having actually this actually. Um, yeah, keep going. I keep going to press shift and that turns it into the wrong one because I'm so used to. There's this thing called a caps lock key, by the way. I know I have it on. It, that's what I'm doing, but oh, every time you push, okay, I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and then underscore. PWM underscore port. 
Oh, actually, actually, you could probably take them. Go ahead. Keep going. Underscore port. Report. Port. P O R T. And actually, you can remove the first PWM because it's sort of redundant. I I thought I I was re thought, and then if you want, you can change uh, look for consistency. Change the word move to lift so it lines up with what you called it. I just realized that you don't have all the constants I made. Okay, so we still have a um, red squiggly line, right? Yeah. So if you um, highlight, hover over it, um, it says it doesn't know what it is. That's what it means when it says can't be resolved or is not a field. So if you do the quick fix item, it'll give you a suggestion. So I would, do the, I would do the first item, which is create constant in robot constants. Yay. And then, oh, semicolon at the end of the line. OK. You now have a lift motor. Well, and then, um, oh, I say to find it. And then would I go in later to do a move the move motor to get it to? Yeah. So, so. While you're at it, why don't you define your uh, intake motor because, and you can probably, whoops, turn the capsule key off. Yeah, it's for turning. <laughs> That's both private correctly. My bad. <laughs> oh, don't worry. What did I say? Uh, I would just call it intake motor. Space. It should look very similar to the line above, right? underscore um, intake. Underscore motor. Oops, underscore. Oh, my bad. <laughs> okay. So my call. Okay. Great. So now next line. So what else does this ball collector consist of? What other components does it have? Um, I think that's just just, just the. Well, no. Doesn't it actually doesn't it have two lift motors, or is it just one? Um. So how are the lift motors connected? Right. So. Yeah. The lift motor has two. There's actually two motors, right? But how does yeah. Lars have them wired up to the speed controllers? Oh, they're wired up as one. Yes, they're wired up as one. Okay. So I don't care that. So the code doesn't care that there's care that actual there's... two physical motors. Yeah, okay. It just needs one speed controller. Yeah. We care about the speed controllers, not the actual motors. Um, so what else, but what else do we have? I think that's it. It's just the motors. So how does the how does the um ball collector know when to stop the motors? Oh, the re, uh, encoders or relays. No. Uh, limit switches. Not the encoders, the um, switches. Yes, the limit switches. I'm sorry. So we probably need a couple member variables for the limit switches, right? So it, yeah, would be um, so it would be again private or would it be pu it'd yeah, be pu they're private? Be private. Limit switch. Um, actually, the the type that you want to use for the limit switch is actually a digital input because that's what they're. Um, yeah. So that guy, hit tab. Okay. And I would do uh, well. You got to give it a name first before you actually initialize it. So, because digital input is the type, right? Yeah. And then you you need to give it a name that you want to 
reference it as. Oh, got it. Um, so I would call like upper and, and up, have an upper limit switch and a lower limit switch. Switch. Equals new new digital input. Yep. And would I fall with the same robot constants? Yes, but you're not. Yes, and I would call it like ball collector underscore upper underscore limit underscore switch, and then I used um, for a brief the I used DIO. Got it. So a uh, ball. Ball collector, uh, upper. Uh, upper limit switch, upper switch. Yep. Underscore. Uh, uh, so it would be, wait, what, instead of a PWM, is it still PWM? Or no, no it's, it's, it's a digital input. So. Okay, digital input. DIO. Yeah. You could, you can, I abbreviated it. You can do whatever you want, but I just abbreviated it as digital DIO. But if you want to do digital input, that's fine. That way I don't look back and be like, what is no, this? That's My fine. His brain. Making it readable is, um, is fine. Digital input. Is that it or? You could, no. put, you could put the word pork if you wanted, or you could just leave this digital input. But, and then you need a semicolon. But yeah. yeah. And create new constant. Yeah. And then do the same thing except for um, lower. lower switch. Yep. Cool. Oh, I, okay. I see. So I see what it did. Okay. Yeah, I do. So, so when you did the little quick fix thing, do you notice what it did? It, I thought it imported. Um, so we know the, it didn't. I uh, forgot robot constants. Right. So see, it inserted line thirteen. Yeah. So you can delete that line and go back and and do it again. Okay. Oh no! Oh yeah. Because you forgot robot constants. That's why, yeah, I, inside that's it. why I did what it did. Yes. Good catch. Is sort of figuring out why I did what it did. I uh, misspelled constants. Oh, of course I did. <laughs> constants. There we go. Yes. So yes, the colors you'll you'll learn the color the color coding for the text is actually kind of useful and helpful for um, back in the old days when I when I learned how to program we didn't have these colorful text editors we had we had monochrome screens green on black yeah so catching syntax errors was a little tougher yeah oh, and then just the same thing. Cool. Yeah. And then, yeah, just yeah, do the, do same, the same thing for lower. for lower. Yeah, and I need to read for it to find my robot constants. Robot. Socks. Hey, Laura, you, you remember how Don used to always use the VI editor for coding? Yep. That's what we used when I was in college. 
Yeah, it's a. Uh... It's good to know, <laughs> but it was a, uh, yeah, yeah. kind of funny that it's like what was the go-to, but well, that's basically what we had because we were running on basically mainframes and stuff. Terminal. Yeah. Okay. And as long as you know the shortcuts, it's great. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. But... Um, uh, so. So when you're well, extending subsystems, is when you define everything, correct? Say what? Is like when it, when you're so under so like just like in general when you're going. Uh, when it says, uh, since when you create a new class, it comes up with public class extends subsystem base. Yeah, that's so when you at, define everything, right? Like new Spark, new digital input. Oh, yeah. So yeah, so the the extend subsystem base part, that's telling you that the ball collector is going to inherit from the subsystem base. So if you were to go look in the WPI lib code at subsystem base, it has a bunch of stuff already defined, right? Um, there's a bunch of methods and, and things um, that are already defined in subsystem base. We don't want to have to rewrite that stuff. So thus we inherit from subsystem base. So we get all that stuff plus the things that we want to add. So um, if you go look at subsystem base, it'll have its own member variables. And but we're and so usually the general convention is you define member variables right at the top, right below where you do the initial definition of the class, just so they're in um, easy there. to find. Yeah. Um, and I, where it sort of comes from, and Laura probably doesn't know this, um, in C, not C++, but in C, you have to, you had to define every, all your variables at the beginning of your function, uh, and then you do everything. So. A general okay th a thing that's sort of acceptable nowadays is you can define variables wherever you want. And some people say, well, you should define it right before you use it. And so you, you, you get these things declared all over the place, which is okay. It's allowable. But back in the old days um, in C, everything had to be defined at the top. And if it wasn't at the top, then it didn't work. So. Yeah. Uh, so I can't think of anything else that we need for the um, ball collector. Well, there is one other thing, but I'll let you kind of like experiment with that and maybe see if you can figure it out. Not necessarily for today, but uh, yeah, later. <laughs> yeah, I want you. I want you to be able to test this out and um, play with it and and stuff. So. Okay, so I would use, I would put a blank line after 16 just to kind of like separate things a little bit. Some separation to make things readable is always good. Um, white space doesn't kill anything. Uh, okay, so um, so what's what's the thing that's like on line 19? What is that thing? Uh, 19 is a public bulk collector, isn't it? Where you put all your uh, commands. Um, so you could not. So this is, um, I was looking more for a generic term. This is the constructor for the class, right? So a constructor for the class is just public, the, the class name and then parentheses, right? So is there anything we really need to initialize other than the things we've done for the ball collector? Because that's what constructors typically kind of do is they initialize things. Um, I don't think so no. except for when it's called upon which it isn't so yeah. would it need to do it so it used to be in the c plus plus world um the old days sort of because even c plus plus nowadays is old um yeah <laughs> you you couldn't do like what we did up above you 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 were not all you're not allowed to do like lift motors equal new blah 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 um like that you can't you weren't allowed to define initialize it as you declare it so in, in C++, you would have your declaration and then inside your constructor, you would do lift motor equals new, blah, 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 intake motor equals. So it used to be, and you can still do that today. It's still allowable, but the new cool kid way to do it is the way you, you've done it up there, is to initialize it when you declare it. Um, if you look at some of the stuff I've done in the robot, you'll notice um, there are instances where I initialize things inside the constructor. Um, 
and there are specific reasons for that too. But um, especially in the drivetrain, if you look at the drivetrain slip cloud, if you were to look at um, actually, if you want to click in drivetrain really quick, I'll, I'll show you an instance where I did that. Um, so scroll down. Uh, so um, go up. So here. So where it says public drivetrain motor type, this is where I'm creating a drivetrain based on, I need to know the, the type of motor. So inside the constructor, I'm initializing, I have a member variable called motor type, right? And I'm passing in a parameter to the constructor called motor type, so I need to assign it. I, I need to keep track of the motor type, right? So I do, th I do that stuff inside the constructor where I initial, it's initially created, I'm setting up the, and I need to create, I need to initialize the member variables based on the, the motor type, right? Uh, so if it was a Victor, I would do something, do I create Victor. So if they're Victor SPXs, I create Victor SPXs. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So you can go back to your ball collector. Um, we don't really have anything at this point to do in the ball collector constructor. Um, if you look at my if you look at my branch later, you'll notice I, I do have one thing in there that I do, um, which is I initialize the dashboard. I created a function to go do all the dashboard stuff, and so I, I, I we're not going to do that today. Um, you can do that later if you want. Um, it's sort of the dashboard stuff is sort of tedious. Uh, I'm more than happy to go over the dashboard with you guys sometime, but we probably don't have time to do that today. Okay, so. Um, they're they're generous and they gave us this this uh, other sort of like stub which is periodic right yeah so this uh, the periodic function let's see what else do we... we'll come back to that actually right. okay so what does the think about what does the ball collector do what what's the functionality that you need the ball collector to do um, to collect balls that's very big okay. sort of for the um spark for the lift motors to go up and down and for the intake motors to okay. spin rotate different so forward and backwards okay, can you break that down into very simple like functional things like um so what when you when you say raise and lower do you want to have one function that just says raise or do you want do you want one function that just raises it, one function that just lowers it, uh, or do you want a function that just sort of like figures it out and then you, or you tell it which way to go and it kind of like goes, well, I'm going up, I go down. Um, I want to tell it which way to go. So it's actually simpler if you break it down into just like have a function that says raise and a function that says lower. Uh -uh. So, um, so underneath the, the periodic method, I would start adding your methods. Uh, right where the green is, right? Or below that? Uh, below that, because the curly brace on line 24 goes with the periodic function, right? So that, that's, that, that matches up, right? So you want to ab start adding after line 24. After, oh, wait. So get rid of the- No, that, that's oh, the closing bracket for the class, OK? Because if you like, go go put your cursor on line twenty four, move the up pusher up arrow. This no, no um, click click on line twenty four, just just to the right of the curly brace. Yeah, so notice how it has the curly brace highlighted, and then right after periodic, it highlights the other curly brace. So it's telling you where the matching curly brace is at. Got it. So if you were to click uh, in the same position on line 26, notice it matches up with the one at the beginning of the class. And you need yeah. those. So um, so you want to start inserting stuff on line 25. So. OK. So um, so this raise these 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 methods, right? Um, who who do we want to be able to call these things? Um, do we want it contained just within inside the class, or do we want things from outside the class to be able to call them? 
Outside the class. Yes. So. Because we want the joystick and to be able to, which yeah. is outside. Yeah. So is this public or private? It's public. Yes. So you're going to. No, wait. Ah. Okay. Public voice. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to ask you, so why did you pick void? Honestly, I do not know. Okay. So this is the, re this just, is be the return type of your function. So we're not really ever going to return anything. We're just going to set some motors, right? Um, so yeah, void is appropriate, but I just want to know if you knew why you put it no, other just, than you put it because. Yeah. No, when I was looking back on <laughs> other, other um, like previously written lines, it seems that void was always uh, written before a command. Um, it's well. This is a this is a method or a function, but it's um because commands are don't get them confused confused with commands because we use because we do there are commands in the robot and they are totally different. Um, and we will do we have we will have to write commands for the ball collector. Um, it's a return type. So if you were doing um some sort of calculation or check or um or whatever, you would need to return that type. So if you did like calculating the circumference of a wheel, right? You do some calculation and you return a floating point number. So you you would want your return type to be a double in that case. But in this case, we're just doing something. We're not ever gonna return any data. So thus we do void. Got it, okay. I will have an example for you later of where you need a return type, so. Okay, so void, um, and I would call it like raise, um, right? just all lowercase. What raise? Yep. Um, I'm sorry, wait, can you repeat that? What raise? Raise, R A I S E. Yep. Uh, and then parentheses. And we don't have any parameters to pass in, right? We don't need to pass any information into this thing. So you can just hit the closing parenthesis. And then you need a curly brace, right? Yep, and hit enter. And it puts in the matching curly brace for you, so. Yay. So now you have, this is what we call a stub. That's fine. and. Generally, what I do is I sort of like stub out all my functions first. So I would I would create an empty lower one. I, I would create an empty lower function, create another method that's like lower. Low, oh, got it. Yeah. Would I do it inside the curly brackets no. or would I do it outside? Because if you did it inside the curly braces, because that would be part of the raise function. Yeah. So you want a new function called lower. Right. Right. Okay. So would I create two more? Um, so yes, you need, for, you need more, right? Uh, you need to be able to um, stop in, it, right? Taken out. Take. Huh? Oh yes, you need right, to stop it. You need intake to stop it. Um, don't worry about the stop right now. We'll get to that. I want you to think about the stop first. So void, and we have intake, and same sort of thing, right? Okay. Okay. I think it's it's uh, intake out taking raise and lower. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, and then we will need to stop the ball. Uh, did I call? Oh, I called it. Oh, no, never. I'm. Never mind. Sorry. I'm looking at my code while I'm watching yours. Um, because I, I was realizing I did something in my code that you might not necessarily do. 
Okay. So uh, when we raise it, what do we need to do? Um, have the spark move. Okay. We need to tell it. We need to tell the spark to move. So how would how do you think we might tell the spark to move? spark <laughs> kind of you're close so you have two motor you have a motor right yeah you called it um lift motor right mm -hmm. so inside your raise function like line 26 yep so indent a little bit so okay so it's called lift motor right so lift yep and it's actually finding it for you so you can hit tab dot because you want to access something on this motor and then you get all these fun little functions that you can call on lift motor so if you scroll down you'll see something that maybe um you want to do you want to set something right so it's going to be under yeah. set um, or you can type just start typing set and it will filter out the list for you so i'm curious if you might find it yourself but you can, you can type set to um, reduce the list. There you go. It's, so. it's not, is it set speed? Yes. Got it. And is it, yeah. Yes. So you can, hit, you can click on set speed, right? So it wants to know a speed. With the night. So this is a number that's going to be from minus one to one, right? A decimal number. So, point two. Huh? Point so, two. Point two. Okay. So, um, yes, you want to put a constant number, the emphasis being constant. <laughs> Don't, it's, it's fine. So, I'm trying to give you a hint. So, robot constants. Right, and then you can call it something. Uh, um. Ball collector. Wait, and I do um, yeah, lift motor at PW on port. No, because that's the port, right? Yeah, right. So I called it ball collector raise underscore raise underscore speed. Right. So you could put just a hard coded value like 0 0.25, which is fine. But the reason I do the constants is because if we need to change any of this stuff, there's one place that has all the constants for the robot versus going, oh, I got to go here or there. Got it. Okay. So you can create a make... constant. So make this a constant. Yep. So. What, the, what that line does is it now sets the motor to run at 0 0.25, which is basically quarter of 25% of its speed. You've just now told the, the motor to move and it's moving. <laughs> so. Um, and then do the same thing except uh, public void um, Lift motor set speed robot constants except a lower speed. And then when I go into robot constants to do, um, it, I then make that a negative. Yes. To run the opposite of my race. This, this is where knowing from like Larry what direction the motor needs to go. Because if we tell it to go the wrong direction, things get <laughs> And we've done that before. It was like, whoops, we told it to go the wrong direction. Because uh, I'm, look, I'm looking to see what actually Larry told me, uh, what he, because uh, actually, when we go to set this, um, it's actually to raise the ball collector. We're supposed to run it at full speed 
backwards. And Got it. Okay, so that's gonna lower be it, it's, but you can define you can set that value later because right because if yeah. you're gonna look in robot if you click on robot constants at the bottom like towards the bottom right on the left in the file list yeah so go click at the the bottom go go all the way oh. down to the bottom uh, in robot constants um, keep going oh that's robot container you want robot constants sorry. Oh, right here. So those are constants I've defined for the drivetrain and all this stuff. So down here at the bottom, you see all the constants that you've made. They're all currently set to zero. So you'll need to go back and later set them to the appropriate values. Uh, so you can see that's why we why, why I do it the way I do it. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to do it the quick and you do it the quick way, the easy way. Yes, you could put minus 1.0 in there and just forget about it and it will work. That's nicer. Not I like having it. It's not the most maintainable thing. Um, it's nicer having all your numbers in just one. Yes. Um, it's a bad habit to put in just numbers. <laughs> yep. Right. Robot constants dot caps. And Laura's had to deal with some interesting code. Because when you get into larger projects, it's it's even more. Oh. Oh. Lower speed. Um, quick flex. Uh, and then do the same thing for intake and outtake. Yeah. Robot, yeah. Underscore. Wait, would it be? It'd be intake speed. Uh, yeah. No, oh, no. Mm -hmm. uh, that's capital. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we also need to stop these things, right? Yes. Because <laughs> otherwise, you just start it and it's going to just keep going. So keep going and going. Oh. Um, so, what I, how would I, would I create? You would want a method called like stop, stop wait, so, or stop move. Or stop lift or wait so underneath this so we're right here when i create a new line lift motor dot sets um so if you did it there so you know that would over you think about this a little bit uh because when we go to run this right we're gonna call you're gonna somebody's gonna call raise right and if you were to do a raise and you set the speed and then right after that you tell it to stop What's going to happen? It's, it's, it's not going to stop. 
it's going to, yeah, it's not really going to go anywhere, right? <laughs> it's going to, it's going to go, you're going to see the like, bloop, bloop. Um, so keep the, the raise the way it is, but you do want a method to call like stop, stop lift. And you want a method called like stop collector or stop intake or whatever you want to call it. So you can stop those motors. So you don't have to necessarily see, so you can just easily stop the motor, right? Under another separate thing, uh, public yeah, like void. Down below, down below, like under outtake and, and stuff. So. Um, so down below, public void. Yep. Ah, sorry. Caps lock. Public void. Stop. Uh, I would. You want two different stops. You want you, you want to stop for the intake motor, and you want to stop for the lift motor, right? Yeah. So they're two separate functions, right? Because you may not. You don't want to stop them both at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, you want them to be separate. You want the stops to be separate. So you're so. So do, a stop, so do a stop for the intake motor. So like call it stop intake. Yep. Um, uh, intake, intake motor dot set speed. Yes. And this is the one case where I don't mind you putting an actual value. So you can hit tab, right? And, and the speed to stop it is zero. Zero, got it. Um, that I find is acceptable because. You will have to go back and change it. Yes. Okay, and then. Um, It's a, it's a well known value. Stop lift. Wait, wrong thing. Um, it'd be the left move. Motor set speed tab zero. Okay. Okay. Um, so that gives you sort of the basics, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we have a few other things to do, but I want to see you. I want you to see this actually kind of work. See, see how you could test this out really quickly. Um, so one thing you can do is you can go into to test it, right? You can go to robot, go down to robot container because this is, I think it's robot container. Uh, yeah, um, go up, um, actually go to robot.java. Okay, so Generally, you're not going to add a whole lot in here, but this is a nice convenient place to be able to play around and test some things out before you like have a command, before you've actually created a command. Like you'll notice there's a folder called commands and drive training. There's all these drive training commands. And it, yeah. looks, it looks scary. We'll get into that later, but you want a simple way to test this out. So you can kind of do that in the robot.java. So, so this is a class that basically represents the entire robot. So where it says like private command, autonomous command, private container, robot container, just under there, you could add a member, member called um, ball collector, right? So you can add private ball. So I would say like line 21, right under private 
Yeah, so you do a private variable called private, and then it's of type ball collector. Yep, you can hit tab. Okay, and then you could give it a really super creative name like my ball collector or whatever you want to call it. Is it so okay capitalization? Um, here it's not super critical, but I try to be consistent. So it's a name of member of code. So, yeah. And you can, you can do the equals new ball collector, right? Because you want to create a ball collector. Okay. And then two parentheses and semicolon. So you got a couple of red squiggly lines there. So like cover over them, quick, the quick fix. Yeah, so it needs to import ball collector. So it knows what it is. Okay. The yellow squiggly line is basically telling you you're not using this thing. So we're gonna go use it. So if you scroll down a little bit, um, I like to put stuff like in, like you could do it in autonomous init um, because this thing only gets called once. Um, so you could put, so like uh, after line 65, so new line after line 65, you just go do like my ball collector dot raise. You can hit tab, it'll fix it for you. Okay, dot, and you want to raise it. Okay. A robot constants? Nope. You're just calling the member. You're just, because you this method doesn't have any parameters, right? So yeah. you don't need to, you just do that in a semicolon. Okay. So now how you can test this out is go to the um, WPI lib command palette, the little W up there, okay? And type simulate. Yeah. Okay, so simulate robot code on desktop. This is the cool simulator thing. So you can actually try it out and see what it does and play with it. Fun and cool stuff. Uh, can you help carry so it's, it's building. <laughs> what was that? Uh, nothing. Sorry, my dad just came downstairs asking me where something was. Uh, oh, it's still building. Well, it's actually downloading the simulator. Thing, I guess. <laughs> sure, it's slow for only being 20 megabytes. <sighs> I guess it's the first time this takes a little bit. They have Sorry. A, it's a, no big deal. Okay, didn't compile it. Blah, 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 blah. It's still going. You see the, where it's downloading on the, in the terminal window? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
downloading don't. I guess I don't see this very often because I do this quite, I, I build stuff and run stuff quite frequently. So. So basically what you've done is basically, if you were to call, um, if you were to put the robot into autonomous, it's basically gonna raise the ball collector. You, uh, should, okay. you should see the motor move for when the ball, when it, right? It should raise the ball collector. This will have a bug in it. And I wanna see if you recognize what happens. Because <laughs> there's certain things, there's something we haven't done yet. I don't know if you realize. What do you think it's going to do? I don't know. You know, it's going to raise the ball collector, right? Is it going to stop? Is it going to stop? Good question. Because we're right? take, you know, you need to stop till you. This is why you do. This, this is why you do it in the simulator, right? So then you can actually see, test things out before it actually gets on the actual robot. Yeah, but for the Take you need to stop before it goes. Well, Larry has also told me that the ball collector is quite robust, and that if we miss the limit switch, the you're not going to miss the limit switch. This, in this case, yes, you will because you're not checking it. But when we go to test it on the robot, we will make sure you don't miss the limit switch. Thank oh you. God, how <laughs> is it downloading? Be nice if it told us how many things it wanted. Why is it downloading all the C stuff? I do not know. Okay, here we go. Coming up. It's decompressing. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so up at the top, the little, where it has the little check boxes, check the, the very top check box. Uh, the pick an extension yep. to run? Yep, because it'll pick all the bottom ones. Hit OK. Uh, what? Nothing. <laughs> Ooh. So, oh, yeah. So it didn't work. So what you see, because you should see this cool UI come up. So it, it, it came up for a little bit. That's what startled me, but now it's. Oh, so, so scroll up in the trunk. So it threw what is called an exception or an error. So if you scroll up a little bit, down, a little bit, down, 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 down. Okay, see so it says program starting. So error, unhandled exception, instantiating robot, blah, 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 blah. And it's giving you a bunch of stuff here, but eventually if you, um, or it says resource out already allocated. So what PWM port did we specify for the motors? I don't think we did. We didn't really. So it's zero, but I think zero is actually, is actually a valid number, but it's actually already used by something else. So yes, click on the file explorer. The, the, that explore, go to robot constants. So this is where you need to know the PWM ports. Um, this is where the IO map is very important, right? Because you need to know where these things are connected. And I will tell you where they're at. Uh, wall collector, PWM port. Um, so the move, the lift motor is zero. And the um, intake motor is two. Um, the switches are um, the upper, the, the lower switch is zero. And the upper switch is one. So one and zero. Okay. Um, so, and then the speeds, right? We need to set a speed, right? Yeah. Because otherwise it's not going to do anything. Um, 
So the raised speed is supposed to be negative one. Um, and then um, the lower speed is 0 0.25. And then for the intake and outtake, I did one in minus one, so. Okay, now try it again. The, yeah, you can, it'll go there automatically. So the command palette and um, simulate is actually already at the top. So this will go much quicker this time because it doesn't have anything to download. Build successful, okay. The top checkbox, okay. Uh, oh, okay. So you should you should be getting this wonderful UI, right? Yeah. Wonder why I can't see it. I see your little spinning thing, but so you see that where it says like um. Uh, usually I, I can share it with you. There you uh, go. Say what? Oh, Bella froze. Maybe it's too much for her internet connection. Oh. Okay, so this might be a little too much for your internet connection. Yay. So in the upper left where it says robot state, you could click on autonomous and you would see one of the motors move. And under oh, where do I see the? Um, so under hardware. So click it, hardware, and then PWM outputs. Yeah. So you see PWM zero is now at set to minus one. Yeah. Over on top right part. You see that? I see it. So now if you hit disabled, it'll go to zero and yeah. So, but you notice, yeah, you told it to raise, but it just keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> so you can close this. So. so that's how you would test things out. That's an easy way to test things out. Um, so let's go back to ball collector. Okay, so we, we obviously know we have a problem with um, yeah. it not stopping, right? You know your raise function, so you can call it, you know how to call the, the function, okay? You know how to test things out a little bit. So you need to have, have something to stop it or figure out how to know when you are where you want to go. So but could I would I change it instead of set speed to something else? No, you you set or does it have to be set speed? So oh no, because we're using the inverse, the uh, digital input. Yes, yeah, so you need to check you need you need a digital, you need to watch the digital input. So you could have so um I'm trying to think of Hey, Laura, how might you do this? Because I the way I did it in my ball collector, um, I don't know if it's necessarily the best. It's not necessarily the easiest way to explain. <laughs> um, just for having an exception? Uh, you could. So the way I or... did it is I, have, I, set a, I had a member variable called destination switch. So, um, so when I... Like a a while until it hits it or? Yeah, that's um, what I was doing. Okay. 
Um, so, so you need to, so you need something to be able to tell you where you're going, right? Yeah. So you, to, to know which switch to look at, because it's kind of like, uh, or you could do something, actually, I, I just kind of remembered, I'm looking at my code. Um, so we have this function uh, called the periodic function, right? Yeah. Um, eventually this thing is gonna get called um, by a command. Uh, Oh, I, I remember for testing this, I did something else. So um, you could, you would want a function to sit and wait for the, the, the switch to close. Um, so um, so you, would it be under public, public hmm? void periodic? No. It would be under up. So uh, forget the periodic part. That we'll, we'll cover that when we go through commands. Um, so go down, back down to the bottom of your file. Okay. So you probably want, you will want a function that um, will, um, let's call it like wait for um, switch. So it's a private um, function because we don't want other people to call this. Uh, wait, no, and I, um, it's not void. Is it void? Actually, for this one, yes, it will be void because it's just going to, it's a function that's okay. it's going to sit and wait for a switch a to close. So it's never going to return um, any sort of data. So it's void. You could call it wait for switch. Okay, so uh, we actually sure. might want uh, a parameter in this case, right? So we need to know which which we're waiting for, right? You have two switches, right? Um, you're waiting so, for digital. Yes. Yeah, you're waiting for. Um, Wait for digital input for raise or waiting for digital input, the upper digital input yeah. to close. So so when you call this, it would probably be really helpful to just have a parameter that you specify that tells you which switch to look for. So in the parentheses, you could pass it, specify a parameter. So in the close parentheses, so it's going to be a digital input. Okay, and then you do a space, right? And then your parameter name, which I would call this like destination, or I called it in my code, D-E-S-T, switch. Or you could call it destination switch. Okay. I would start it with the lowercase b, but that's fine. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So, so you're passing in this this thing, uh, the switch that you want to watch, right? So this is. Um, Wait, um, right? shouldn't? Hmm? Wouldn't there be a dot between digital input and destination switch? No. Because. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You're, 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 it's fine. You're defining a um, parameter. So a parameter has to have a data type. You have to know whether it's an integer or a float, or in this case, it's an object. And what is that object type? It's a digital input. So we're passing in an actual object, switch. So no, that's fine. Um, I'm not, I'm, so can you hover over the yellow squiggly line? I'm curious what it says. 
Oh, it's just saying it's never used. Okay. Okay. So, um, how, so what do you, how would you go about waiting for a switch? What do you do? Just waiting there. Yeah, it's sitting there. You so you're um you're so actually it's, as so just so you can see. So tab in do in depth a little bit. So just to show you, type destination switch. Right, hit tab dot because you want to access a member variable. Right, and. You, you want to do the, the get, right? So that's going to tell you the status of the switch. Just that get at the top. Get balloon, got it. Yeah. And a semicolon. So, so what this does is this is going to return a true or false. So it's going to tell you true if the switch is closed, false if the switch is open. So the way you have this written now, right? You're just going to call it. It's going to go. It's not going to do anything, right? It's just going to, because we're not returning anything, it's just going to go bloop and you're done. Well, the, you need to, the way you stay in this function until the switch is um, closed, and notice I'm doing a sort of motion, it's a loop, right? Yeah. You want to constantly loop through and, and check the status of the switch. So um, do, do you remember from the CS Awesome course, like while loops? Um, I don't, I remember okay. if that's, that's fine. Because I know it's been, been a little bit. So a looping mechanism is you have a block of code that will just keep going through until a certain condition is true. Um, so, after your, so eventually we'll delete that line, but um, so do a new line. So there's a loop construct called while. So it's going to loop while a certain condition is true. So, and it starts with the word while, so all lowercase while, yep. And then parentheses, a, yep, and you need to put stuff inside the parentheses. So inside the parentheses is your the condition you're checking. So the condition that happens when you want to leave this loop um, to exit. So um, this is a spot where you're going to check the switch because the switch that line on line forty nine is going to return a true or a false, right? Yeah. Well, so, uh, so what do you do? Well, destination switch equals um, true? Close. While destination switch dot get, because you need to actually go get the value. Because oh. destination switch by itself represents just the switch. Yeah. So <laughs> notice it says get returns a Boolean. So Boolean is True or true false. Or false. Yeah. So that's what you want. Okay. So parentheses, another parentheses or no? You can click on that. So um, I will tell you that while well, generally this is um, that's interesting. I actually wondered if I did mine right. Um, <laughs> um, so if it's returning true for closed and true and false for open, you actually want to uh, wait while it's not equal to true. So. So it'll stay well, stay in this loop while this condition is true. So 
the way you do not equals is, um, do you remember how you do not equal? I don't, so sorry. Do, so do a space, exclamation point, equal, so yes, and then um, true, lowercase, yeah. Notice it's giving you a hint as to what, what it wants. Okay. So this will loop while the switch is um, not true. So like a function, so go to the end of the line, you need a curly brace because it's going to define a block of code. Yep. Hit, hit enter. So curly braces are Basically, it can. It's basically saying a block of code. So a while while loop is going to be a block of code. So um, you could do this, and it will sit, and it's going to go really fast through this. Um, that will, while that is, that will be fine. Um, this is not something I expect you to know. Um, uh, it will overwhelm the Robo Rio and it's going to get really slow and it's going to struggle because it's doing multiple things all at once. Yeah. So you need to, there's there's a way to kind of like tell this thing to kind of like go to sleep for a little bit and then um, it will go through again and then it comes through and sleeps. Um, and it's, it's called, a, there's a sleep command. So you can do thread dot sleep. So capital the top, yeah. So get used to trying to use the um, the auto collect. Yeah, so sleep and then, yep. And hit tab. Oops, okay. Parenthesis. And then uh, if you just, it's just going to take like um, an argument, like, um, yeah. It, so you can put in like 10, which is going to be 10 milliseconds. And then a parenthesis, a semicolon. Sorry. So, so what this guy does is it's gonna do check your condition at the top, and then it goes into the loop and it execute the code. It executes. It's gonna go to sleep for ten milliseconds. It's gonna wake back up, come back up to the the while part, and it's gonna execute that that check again, and then goes back in and does the sleep, and it does that until. Um, while the, the switch is no, while the switch is open, while it's um false, right? So um, you have a red squiggly line. So hover over the red squiggly line. Yes. So this one you actually need to fix, and I don't expect you guys to know how to fix this, but this is where just doing the quick fix option and, and taking what it tells you to do will fix the problem and it's acceptable. So do the quick fix. Great, quick fix. Um, and actually do the surround with try catch. Because the other option just makes the problem worse. Um, okay, so we now have a function that will sit and wait for the switch to close, okay. right? So now if you go back up to your raise, right? So this is where you're gonna call after your lift, after you set the speed for the lift motor. So you can, so new line after line 28. Okay. You can now call wait for a switch or whatever you call the function. Wait switch, I think is what you called it. Yep. Uh, wait switch, yeah. So notice it's in, the, it's in the list of suggestions it's giving you. So, yep. So you need to tell it which switch you want to look at. Um, this is probably the upper switch, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. 
And what do you want to do after that returns? Um, thread? You want to stop it, right? Yeah. So how do you stop the motor? Um, set lift motor, set speed, robot constants. Yeah, but you also wrote a function to stop it, right? So you could call that function. So you could do like stop lift motor. Or stop lift, yes. Yay. So now. I do the same thing to the um, public void lower, except this time I would wait switch would be lower switch, stop yep. lift. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now, if you went to robot.java, you can um, you can do the raise, and then you can do a lower, like mod my ball collector dot lower. And if you were to run this in the simulator, I'm not a I, I uh, oh, sorry. yeah, go ahead. That's fine. You're I was I was going some someplace else. Right. So that's gonna raise it and lower it, right? So if you were to run this in the simulator and you go into and you set it to go into autonomous mode, it's gonna raise it. So you're gonna see the one PWM go to, to one or minus one. And then in that hardware menu, there's a way to pull up the, um, you can, like you did the PWMs, you can pull up the digital inputs if they're already not there. And then you can set the, go into the digital input and set the um, value to true or false. And then you should see the motor stop. You should see that PWM zero go to PWM value go to zero. And then it's gonna immediately call lower which you're gonna see it go to the other value and then you could set the lower switch and make sense? Yeah. Okay, I don't know if you wanna try that out. We've, we've been at this for a while today. So uh, you can, you're more welcome to try it out if you want, but you that might be something you wanna experiment on your own. Yeah, I just don't want my computer glitching out with me with Zoom. Yes, that's why I'm not suggesting you like try it right now because we saw how wonderful it affected your um, internet connection. So um, I think that, so do you think this is a good start for you as far as ball club? I think this is really good. Okay. So Olivia and Kayla, are you guys still awake? And Ethan, did you guys find it useful, helpful? Yes, very helpful. Okay. And you're allowed to tell me no if, if it's not, so. Um, so uh, with that, I, I think you're on the right track. So, and then you can push the stuff to GitLab and say, hey, I have a question and I can take a look at it in GitLab, that's fine. Um, Laura might have better suggestions on how to, to make it more accessible in GitLab than I do, but. Uh, Yeah, but I mean, I, I think it looks good. Are you familiar with uh, with pushing it to, to GitLab? Yeah, pushing, it and, getting, pushing yeah. and getting it from GitLab, I'm really, I'm pretty yeah. confident. Cause, okay. Cause don't worry about if it doesn't work or, or this is not anything that's like in the master branch. This is off in this ball collector branch that um, nobody cares about right now. Well, they do care about it because they want to see a ball collector, um, <laughs> but it's not going to affect any testing or anything like that. Um, it's not going to make the robot break. It's not going to make the robot drive off the stage. It's not going to. <laughs> uh, although yesterday when we were doing the ARC stuff, I did tell Mr. Norton, it's like, May, I want to make sure it doesn't go off the stage. And I had Larry, I told Larry, okay, you need to be ready on the e-stop button. And, and so 
it was doing some stuff and he actually he's like how do you do the e-stop it's like it's a space bar and he actually did the e-stop and then he's like okay i want to re-enable it he's like um yeah you have to reboot the, the robo reel he's like i didn't want to do that you're kidding he was like no that's, that's the way it works and it's like either that or you need to be ready to click the disable button on the driver's seat he's like well i could be ready to do that okay so so when do you guys want to meet again? I'm all done with volleyball, sadly. Yay! <laughs> so I can meet any time. So um, you guys want to do Tuesday, Thursday? You guys want to make an attempt at um, trying this stuff out? Yeah. And if you, want to meet, me. if you just want to meet like one-on-one -on -one before then, um, that's fine. Just send me an email or Laura email and we'll help you out. Um, I don't think I have anything super exciting this week. I need to finish writing this stupid paper for um, a job. So yes, even I I have homework and they actually titled it. The email is your homework assignment. I'm like, it's a two to five page document on a challenging technical thing that I did and my leadership, technical leadership. So, um, yeah. So, fun. I gotta finish that today. So, other than that, not a whole lot going on. So, okay. I'm more than happy to sit down and, and walk you guys through how to do some of those, because the way you learn to do this is doing it, so. Um, yeah, and I would then, say, uh, I think like, well, you can probably feel free to push to the just the feature ball collector branch, but yes. you also could create your like create the Bella ball collector and push to that. And then, um, you know, if others wanted to kind of do a similar thing off of the main uh, feature ball collector. Yes, but... and that's what I was. I I sort of realized that after I told you guys just do it in the ball collector branch, it would have been easier for you guys to create your own branches. If you want to create your own branch, great, because then you're sort of like isolating, you're not stomping on each other. Because if you're all checking into the one ball collector branch, right? Bella checks something, and then if Olivia and Kayla do something, then it changes, and then you get, yeah. So if you want to create your own branch, you can. If you collect into the, go into the one collector branch, then you may get some interesting conflicts. And things may or may not work, and, or things may change unexpectedly on your, oh, oops. Um, yeah. So um, if you're curious, uh, I can show this really quick. Uh, see how it share the screen. And I did just see uh, Ethan had a message in the chat. So he has oh. baseball the next six weeks from three to five. So he can attend like sometime after then. So probably if we did the yeah, 6 p.m. I was going to do like six o'clock on Tuesday and Wednesday or Tuesday, Thursday. And we can start going um, through commands a little bit. And I'll show you a little dashboard stuff. Um, because the commands and the dashboard will actually make it easier to test things out. Um, so the thing I was going to show you was um, desktop to share. So yes, there's here's my ball collector, and you're more than welcome to go look at my ball collector branch. Um, and that's fine. Uh, you can see kind of how I did it. <clears throat> uh, the thing I was going to show is. So in the repository, if you go to repository in GitLab, there's this kind of cool thing called graph, which shows you um, all the branches. And we started down here and we sort of branched and we merged things back. And so you can see feature ball collector is way down here. Well, master is way up here. So um, these are all the changes that have happened since I branched um, ball collector stuff. So. I just thought, I just think it's kind of cool because um, you can see all the changes that go into the master branch. Yeah. So. so eventually, once you guys get it all written, we'll do a merge into master and all those changes will be there and they'll have to be a ball collector. So pretty pictures. So anyhow, with that, uh, it's been almost two hours, so. I will let you guys go. If you have questions, email me. 
email Laura. We'll answer them. So I was trying to be polite on Wednesday and not be my evil manager self and say, okay, guys, what's up? <laughs> so, because that was my job was to poke Laura. I was like, why is this not done? I got people bugging me about why is this not done? So, so let's get it done. So, cool. I'll talk to you guys later. We'll see you on Tuesday. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.